saying. All right, well, exactly a week ago, we spoke with the People's National Party's representative in the race for St. Mary's Southeast in that constituency. Is not Whoa, Dr. Dunn says it's a race. Well, this morning we're joined by a very confident JLP contender. Is that the right word, sir? Candidate. All right, candidate. I think I was going to say it's winner. It's not Jerry um, Neville. <laughs> Dr. Norman Dunn is here. Good morning to you. Morning, You're very upbeat. Um, you pretty much figure you have this in the bag. Am I correct by, by saying that? You think that's a correct assessment? I'm very confident. That much I'll say. You think you have it in the bag? I'm very confident. Okay, okay. <laughs> you lost uh, by just five votes. Is that one of the reasons you're confident? Because you're going up against someone who is not relatively new, who is brand new to, to this kind of thing. Would, would that uh, add to your confidence? No, it's the, it's the relationship that I've developed right across the constituency that has given me this confidence. Um, as you know, I was born in Anatomy, which is in the constituency. But by traveling across the constituency and the relationship that I've formed um, during the two years, two years so far, mm -hmm. I mean, that is what has given me the confidence. I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal. What you lost? Well, on the books, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the people's mind. What is that? No, I was asking is that what does that mean? <clears throat> um, in that the people of South East St. Mary has seen their winner. Um, and therefore in the minds of the people, which is the most important thing, they have a winner. You Still not sure I understand, understand that. that but, um, so all right, let's let's be specific. Why did you lose? Well, um, do you accept that you lost? Of course. Okay. Yeah, so why of course, did, why it's, a, did you it's a democracy. Win? Yeah, why did um, you lose? Uh, Well, good question. A number of things, possibly. Um, late in the campaign, I mean, I entered pretty late in the campaign. So it didn't give me enough time for persons to know me and know their candidate as well as they do now. So that could have been one of the factors. Okay. I hear you said September 3, there's an article that was published where you say, um, the PNP has held the seat for 23 of the past 27 years. You can't name one institution that has been built over the period. The people of Southeast St. Mary are tired of this politics of mediocrity. And what I can say is that the PNP time done. That's right. Done. No. Um, tell me a little bit about your vision for Southeast St. Mary and what you feel has not been done in that constituency. Well, my vision is so for Southeast St. Mary is one where persons can achieve their, their dreams. Um, the physical infrastructure is very, very poor. Um, the housing is very, very poor. Youth unemployment is very, very poor. There's just no skills training. Um, there's no job opportunities. So my vision is one where, where once the, once the um, conditions are created, I believe, just like my story is, that we can unearth a lot of talent and a lot of opportunities in Southeast St. Mary. And that is what I'm bringing to the table, one where development is at the heart of, of the, the thrust in the constituency, where young people and youth as, uh, as something to look forward to um, from the representative and just from representation generally. Mm -hmm. What are you getting from the young people on the ground? Wow, it's, it's phenomenal. Young people are, are really, really ready to go. I mean, they can, they can see the energy. They can see the passion that I have for, for the constituents here, for them in particular. And therefore, the support is overwhelming. Wow. By the way, the former um, PNP um, flag bearer, I suspect, uh, didn't agree that nothing was done in the constituency. And he named a, a number of things that were done. Um, so he's suggesting that you were wrong there. Um, but as you move on, mm -hmm. um, again going back to, and I'll use the word novice, going up against a, a novice in, in this area, um, how do you feel about your opponent? Well, you could say I'm a novice as well. <laughs> well I'm not in there long enough either. Um, longer than he has, yeah. for sure. Sure, yes. Um, well, I welcome anybody who was joined the political process. I believe that it is, it is as I was saying to Simone earlier, it, it is a, it's a very difficult task. Um, to offer yourself um, for representation. It has its, its plus and its minuses. But once you're committed to the people, 
and to the, those you intend to serve, it becomes very easy. I mean, I'm having fun. I just love this. I, I just love this, and I can't wait to be the member of Parliament for Southeast and Mary. Yeah, um, they, they have this thing in politics where they say your first 100 days, what would be the first couple of things you would want to achieve? As uh, if, say you won this seat, what would be the first couple of things you want to achieve? Well, some of the things I want to achieve is, is um, to highlight the opportunities that exists and has existed under the Jamaican Labour Party government so that young people can access some of these things. What kind of opportunities um, are you talking about? Opportunities, um, job creation in particular. I mean, we have created almost 35,000 new jobs since we are in power. I mean, I mean, as you can see in the, in the paper or in the media last week, I mean, 5,000 jobs are being offered somewhere else. Right now, 800 jobs are being offered somewhere else. In your constituency? But, no, well, generally. Yeah, but I'm talking but, about your constituency. Right, but I'm saying persons need to be able to access them and therefore, I mean, job fairs are important, that we can identify what is available, and therefore the person, especially youth, as an opportunity, because sometimes... What is available in, in South um, St. Mary? That's also. the problem. Not a lot of things available in South St. Mary, except farming. I mean, we're a large farming community, there's no doubt about that. So um, assisting the farmers is important in the short term, but, but creating employment opportunity um, in Southeast will take a while. I mean, we have a vision where we want to do an industrial complex in the area. I mean, there are about two or three factories there. And we want to expand on that so that, so that locally in the Southeast St. Mary, persons have access to it. I'm still not certain I got the first couple of things you're going to do. But well, well, the first, I mean, include, of course, um, looking at bridges. I mean, there's, a, there's an area called Chesterfield. Uh -huh. I mean, those persons have been crying out for a bridge. You'd have seen the stories about persons wading through water continuously not to get to their place. We want to ensure that that is done in the first 100 days. Okay. Um, road improvement in a number of areas, we want to ensure that some of them are done in the first 100 days. Okay. So you talk about Castleton and building out Castleton. Um, factories, rehabilitating roads. Let's talk about roads. Yes. Let's talk about $600 million roads. Yes. Um, uh, the junction road is about set, or the, the spend has been approved to go ahead with that. Some people see that timing as very opportunistic um, for the JLP. What say you to the folks who say Oh, I that? say absolutely not. I mean, if you notice, um, again, from the media, this was uh, a project that has been on the books for a very, very long time. I mean, 17th of January this year, the, the late member of parliament indicated that the project was on and was imminent. Um, he had gotten some funds at that time to repair some of the, the, the large amount of potholes that was present. But the point I'm making is South East St. Mary and St. Mary in general, Neville and Simone, has been devoid of, of this infrastructure development for so long. And I've said on the media before that anywhere in this country that road development is going to take place, we should welcome it. And the fact that it is in South East St. Mary now, I mean, we all heartily so Welcome why wouldn't this. it have happened before? If, if it were on the project for a long time, and on the 17th of January, the former um, MP spoke about it, why, why no at this particular time, one, and two, um, the reports of the bushing program, why at this particular point? Because some people are saying the JLP is using it to score political points, to help carry you over the mm -hmm. top, now that you think you need it, because you're obviously very confident. But do you think... Even from an optics perspective, do you understand why people would think it looks? Of course. I mean, I could understand that. Um, but remember, these are budgetary issues. And therefore, the government would have to find the funds in order to do it. I mean, from, from what I get to understand, this project was, was conceptualized a long time ago. And with the help of a curated fund, um, it was supposed to have happened. Whatever reason for that not to have happened under the previous government is a different issue. Um, but this government has seen it fit because the corridor is so important to traverse from Kingston to Ocho Reyes or to Port Antonio. They believe that it is very, very important. And I, I don't know if you have traveled on a road, Neville. I mean, it's horrible. I, I don't travel that it's road. It's horrible. Well, maybe that's why you don't, no, you, you don't why understand. No, that's it's a, it's a, to me, it's a, it's a death trap. That's the point. Really? So this, this government, or no, our prime minister, believes that infrastructure development is important and this corridor is very important to open up investment opportunities in Southeast St. Mary and along this particular area because that's what we need. The investment cannot be um, concentrated in one particular area okay. and therefore by opening up this road, 
it's going to spur investment and opportunities for Southeast St. Mary, for Portland, and areas adjoining this particular October area. October 31, you're going to be the Member of Parliament. Of course. <laughs> Good luck, sir. You're welcome. And thanks a lot for coming. You're welcome, Neville. Candidate so for welcome. the um, St. Mary's Southeast constituency by-elections, Dr. Norman Dunn. Very confident, Dr. Norman Dunn. After the break, we look at how exercise helps you to be more heart healthy. Stay with us for that. Thank you very much, Doc.